Hi, I'm Bob. In the past few videos, we have studied the consumer theory together and used the budget constraints and indifference curves to find the optimal consumption bundles of the goods. We also derived the demand curve of a good based on the consumer's optimal decisions. Today, let's adopt this method to find people's optimal choices between leisure and consumption. We assume that people divide their time into two parts, leisure time and work time. So the trade-off between leisure and consumption provides us with information on people's work hours. We can derive the labor supply curve, just as we have done for the goods demand curve. Let's see how we can accomplish it. Consider the decision facing Amy. Amy works for McDonald's. She has 100 hours per week to spend on either leisure or work. She spends some of her time enjoying leisure and some of it working so she can afford to buy consumption goods. We first analyze how her optimal bundles of consumption and leisure change with an increase in her wage. As shown in the graph, we put consumption on the vertical axis and leisure time on the horizontal axis. The increase in her wage rotates her budget line hours. Her budget line becomes steeper. To see why the budget line rotates this way, we can consider her budget constraint function. Her hours of work equals 100 minus hours of leisure. The hourly wage times her hours of work is her income, which is equal to her expenditure on consumption goods. We assume the price of consumption goods is 1. We rearrange the equation and express it as C plus W times L equals 100 times W. It is the standard form of a budget constraint function. The price of consumption goods times the quantity of consumption goods plus the price of leisure times the hours of leisure equals the total income if she spends all her time working. Notice that the price of leisure is the opportunity cost of leisure time. Amy gives up one hour's wage for one hour of leisure. As hourly wage increases, the vertical intercept increases, and the horizontal intercept is unchanged. So the budget line rotates this way. Amy's optimal choice moves from E1 to E2. This total effect can be decomposed into the substitution effect and the income effect. The movement from E1 to E prime is the substitution effect. The opportunity cost of leisure increases as the hourly wage increases. Amy chooses to consume less leisure because it becomes more expensive. The movement from E prime to E2 is the income effect. The increase in hourly wage makes Amy richer and she can afford more of both goods. The total effect of the wage increase on leisure is that the hours of leisure reduce from L1 to L2. Therefore, the hours of work rise from H1 to H2. In this example, the increase in hourly wage leads to a decrease in hours of leisure and an increase in labor supply. We can derive the demand curve for leisure and the labor supply curve for Amy. As illustrated in the graph, as the hourly wage rises, the optimal consumption choice moves from E1 to E2. The demand for leisure decreases 
and the supply of hours of work increases. Now we know that the labor supply curve is derived from the consumer's optimal bundles of consumption and leisure with respect to the change in hourly wage. The labor supply usually slopes upwards, but the labor supply curve can be backward bending if the income effect dominates the substitution effect in a certain part of the curve. We assume that the hourly wage continues to rise. As shown in the graph, the income effect of a wage increase is much greater than the substitution effect. That is to say, Amy becomes so rich that she would like to enjoy a lot of leisure time and just need to work for a short time. As a result, as the hourly wage rises, she consumes more leisure and works less. In conclusion, as the hourly wage increases, Amy will work more hours. But as the hourly wage rises to a very high level, she may work less. Her labor supply curve could be better bending. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.